Hey, it's Kendrick with Technology Interpreters. And so today I'm going to be walking through Hack the Box Starting Point Pathfinder. So I'm going to go ahead and I filled in all the gaps. Like there are some things that are broken, so I'm going to fix those. And so hopefully this will be through in about less than 20 minutes, maybe a little bit over. So let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing we're going to do in the guide is we're going to go ahead and we're going to do what's called a MOS scan. And what you're, we're doing is basically we're scanning all the ports within a certain network so for the 10.10.10.30 server we're going to scan every port from one all the way up to 65.535 and so let's get started and as this is scanning i'll explain exactly what this is doing because i want you to understand why we do things not just how we do it so the first thing i'm going to do is going to start here i'm using the pseudo man to pseudo command to escalate my privileges and we're going to go ahead and run this and we're going to type cali which is the default password for cali linux that's going to start scanning so it's going to go to all the ports on this server and it's going to return me like what's open and what's available so we can know what to attack. The minus E actually allows you to, to determine the interface that you're going to scan on. And the rate, this thing can go up to like really crazy speeds as far as how many uh, ports and IP address that is scanning at a time. So pretty much, I, I think it says something like you can scan the entire internet with a certain amount of hours. It's kind of crazy. So anyway, we're going to select a rate of 1000, which is reasonable. Okay, so what we're looking for is it says port 88 is typically associated with Kerberos. And so this shows you what their scan when it finishes. We're going to let us go. Uh, it also shows port 389 is associated with. So it's associated with LDAP and then also uh, domain controllers. And then finally, we note that WinRM is enabled, which is port 5985. Okay, so we got these different ports that we can attack. And so let's go ahead into the next step and let's see what it wants us to do. So it wants us to do enumeration. So if you were with us in the previous uh, videos, I went ahead and hacked some of the servers and I'm going in order. So we were able to get passwords for Sandra, which is password one, two, three, four. And so we can attempt to enumerate Active Directory, which we're going to like pull the list of users, groups, domains, forests, everything. We're going to pull this stuff out of Active Directory and we're going to use this to our advantage. Okay, so you can achieve this by using Bloodhound. There's a Python Bloodhound ingester that we can that can be found here. It can be installed using the pip install Bloodhound. So let's open a new tab, file, new tab. And I'm going to pull this over so I can see all my notes here. So I've already done this. So really quickly, I'm just going to copy and paste. All right. So you can slow the video down. So pip install Bloodhound. That's the command. Press that. Do you want to install? Yes or Y password? Kali, K-L-I, K-A-L-I. And we're going to let this install. So next is going to say once we got that installed, it wants us to run this Bloodhound command. Guess what? If you try to run the command, it won't run. Okay, so I reset my VM because I wanted to. Uh, I wanted to make sure I got everything working. So you're gonna go ahead and select yes right there. By the way, I was waiting waiting for a prompt. Okay, so I'm gonna wait just a little bit and uh, let this run through its its install process. And make sure you pay attention. Once again, I did the pip install. I had to select yes. Everything ran fine. So here in our document we, we do want to click on this because this shows us a, a piece that we need to install but i've actually taken this and simplified it for us now i'm clicking this and it doesn't want to act right okay finally is there now it's going to open eight windows but if you see here it takes us to github and then here's the the bloodhound program and everything that we need to be successful here okay so we're going to take this and i've simplified it so what you do is you click on the code and you select this right here and you can copy this. OK, I've already got it typed out. You're going to type git clone. Now, one thing to note, we do everything from in this tutorial. We do everything from the downloads folder. So I'm going to select. Um, let's see. Let's actually I'm going to just clear this tab. We can, we'll just reuse this one and then on CD to downloads. All right, LS, make sure to downloads folder. Now I'm going to run this command. So git space clone and then the address we just copied. All right, that's running. Looks like everything was successful. OK, so then I'm going to go ahead and change directory. So I'm going to type of LS so you can see. So that bloodhound.py folder is there. I'm going to go CD bloodhound. Go into that folder. I'm going to type LS again. And you can see I see the blood bloodhound.py command and stuff like that. But the thing is, We've got to install Bloodhound for it to run, okay? And so I'm going to copy this over from my document, and here's the command we're going to type: Python three space setup .py space install. I'm going to type that command. Now we're installing. Now, 
let's see did everything work correctly just want to see make the proper changes okay create a remove permission not okay so that was a problem it didn't run i'm going to try sudo sudo and make sure you do that sudo which will escalate up let's see how much more we got all right that was successful so make sure i'm going to update my notes there so should have put a sudo we needed elevated credentials to do it now here's the next phase of this i'm going to clear this again i'm going to keep reusing this window so now we're here we got that command but we're not ready to run the command yet there's a lot is left out in this tutorial so it wants us to run this bloodhound.py command so what we're going to do is we're going to do a locate and you'll see that it's not you it didn't find it so i did locate that's that's what happened now i did my very very rudimentary search well, cd to the root and i did a find pipe grep and i did bloodhound dash python and oh forgot the sudo sudo space fine and when i did that it got permission to not but watch this there it is user local bin bloodhound.py it's actually there okay so it did install it on your scene so now we've got to do some options to get this ready to copy so i'm going to go cd slash um home cali make sure you pause the video if you need to to do this cd all right downloads go back to my downloads folder okay clear this out now i've got the command typed out take time to do this so i'm going to reference that file with the credentials like they got all this stuff right here right that's not not going to work for you okay here's the command that works sudo python 3 and you're going to do a slash user local bin bloodhound dash python that they, they, they just have bloodhound dash python minus d megacorp that's megacorp.local that's your username i'm sorry that's the domain minus u sandra minus p your password minus gc i don't know what that means <laughs> okay pathfinder local all and then of course the ip address and we're going to go ahead and run this and this should run correctly so that's the working command it's going to connect to direct active directory if you start to see these infos like this you got it okay and so at this point it's going through it's identifying what is finding users domains domains in the forest computers 48 groups the whole nine okay so we got that and then so the, the json file should now be in your working directory so we're in downloads remember so if i type of ls boom i got these json files you see them very nice to have those we want those so now we want to uh let's see it's going to need to be imported to bloodhound but bloodhound is not ready yet so let's go into the next command so a pseudo apt once again sudo and all this they don't put this in the guide all right sudo apt install neo 4j that's the next command and I could really I could really cut this down to five minutes I could just run all the commands but I want you to understand why I'm running all the commands okay all right and we're getting there we're, we're getting pretty good into the tutorial now so we'll let this finish then we're going to run the same command next time but we're going to install bloodhound okay that's going to be next on our list so sudo apt install bloodhound all right but once again we got to let this finish because we need all these programs in place trust me <laughs> I'm trying, I'm saving you a lot of time. So sudo space apt space install bloodhound is next on our list. We just did that. So next we'll need to configure the Neo for service. We can accomplish by the running this command. All right, I'm going to show you something. When this installs, I'm going to clear this window again. And then this window is going to have to be left open because it's one of those things that's going to run a program. It's going to open up a, a, a web port or a web browser or, or set up a web browser or something. Or it's going to set up a web server. Sorry, I'm tripping and so this tab will need to remain open for bloodhound to run so we're going to give it just a second hey nice music from my apple watch spam detected good deal good deal good deal okay all right and so we're finally finished so let's go ahead and clear that okay not this Jeez. gotta make sure i'm on the right window so clear that window and ah oh man i put it in the previous next mode that's okay i'll work with it so now that we've got that neo bloodhound we're going to go on to page four and okay I, i'm finally in scroll mode thank you good okay so it wants us to start the console so it says neo we're going to do sudo neo for j start console okay i think i left out the start there 
Actually, no, I didn't. That command is wrong. It doesn't work. It's just pseudo Neo 4J console. And there it is. Doesn't look like this is working, but it is. Wait for it, and you're going to see it's going to come up with a, a um, address, IP address, and a port. And this is what's going to be needed for Bloodhound to run. So that command is work wrong. Pseudo space Neo 4J space console is the correct command. Okay. Not start. Took me a while to figure that out myself. Okay. <laughs> All right. And so then uh, we'll wait. And I'm just going to do this. Let's see. With, with, uh, I want to get it off this scroll page. I hate this. <sighs> but we wait for a second. Let this finish. And then we're going to start our Bloodhound command here. And you'll see Bloodhound. This will need to be stay, stay up. All right. So you see we got this local port. Local 74, 74. Leave this tab open. We're good to go. New tab. And now we're going to run Bloodhound. And of course, you know, when something runs and it leaves a tab open like that, you need to leave that terminal window. So Bloodhound, just like in the, in the diagram, and there it is, Bloodhound opens. And of course, that terminal needs to stay open. Do not close that. Now, it wants us to use a username and password. The username for this is just going to be Neo, N-E-O, or J. Okay. Password, we don't have a password, so we need to generate a password. How do we do that? We got to go to the address here that it just showed us in the uh, text, but that's okay. I got you here. So I'm going to do, uh, do, do, do a new tab. Uh, we don't need that. I actually need to go to the browser. There you go. I was looking for the plus sign. So we're going to go to localhost here. <laughs> got to set up a username and password. I've already got one, you know, but I'm going to auto gen it. Cause I want you to see the entire process. All right, there it goes. Neo4j database leave empty of default. Uh, authentication, username, password. Username is Neo4j. But see, we don't have a password. So we need to generate a password. So by default, it's Neo4j and Neo4j. All right, and I'm going to click don't save here. And let's see if we can. All right. So still connecting. Give it a second. Actually, now I want us to shut, set up a password. Remember, username is Neo4j. I'm going to auto generate password. OK, my password ain't your password. So you write down whatever is generated there. So there is the auto generated password that we're going to use. All right. And I make sure you copy out all of that. OK, make sure you get all of it in home. I'm just going to copy it twice just to make sure I strongly suggest you do the same thing. OK. All right. And then it did good. And I'm going to click change password. So now that is our password. Do not mess this step up <laughs> or you're going to have to figure out how to change the password. So now that I've changed the password here, I don't need to do anything else. I go back to Bloodhound, which I left open. Hope you didn't close yours. Neo4j paste the password that we just generated. I'm going to click log in. You can save it if you want to. Uh, I don't typically do it because I'm just going to reset this. And we officially are here. So the next step in the process is, is once we got the console running, we got Bloodhound, Bloodhound running. And sure, you have a connection to the database. We've already had the check there. I hope you noticed it. Default username is Neo4j with the password previously set. Open Bloodhound and we can drag the JSON files and Bloodhound will begin to analyze the data. We can select various queries. Okay, so let's stop here. They're gonna, that's a lot that they're trying to say. So let's go open up our file browser. Okay, open up folders here. Going to drag it over here, go into the downloads folder. And if you notice, there are JSON files. One, going to control click all of these for JSON files. And so I'm just going to go back to Bloodhound. All right, go back to the top. See, Bloodhound is there. See, Bloodhound is displayed, but it doesn't show anything. So I'm going to drag these JSON files that I selected in there. And it's going to upload. Give it a second to do its thing. And then we'll be able to use Bloodhound. I'm going to go ahead and close this at this point. I'm done with that. And so these files will need to see they're importing. Once again, this is none of this is shown in the documentation. So hang in there. I'm going to get you through this because this is the final exercise of all the free servers before you had to go VIP. But this should be the one that's going to get you ready to go out into the wild and attack these other servers and hack the box. Now, when this finishes, I'm going to go to the bottom here and I'm going to close the guide because it's a uh, piss me off. I hate when I accidentally push that and put it in that mode. I want to be able to just scroll up and down. So let's open the guide again. 
while that's uh downloading okay man man my thing is slow 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 okay there it is all right so now i got it in a mode i wanted to i'm gonna cancel this man all right there we go perfect I'm gonna move this over and now i can just freely scroll because i want to have this up towards the middle so once bloodhound finishes running which it hasn't we're going to see two reports one is called the shortest path to high value targets and the other is going to be called fine principles with dc rights that's what's displayed here that report fine principles with dc rights right there that's what you're seeing here but once again you got to give it time for it to finish so we're close at this point oh cool cool looks like we did finish okay so i'm going to click on over here on the left hand side go to analysis once again it doesn't tell you this and the first report was shortest path to what shortest path uh to high value targets so on like here once again on analysis shortest path to high value targets now to click on this and we can go ahead and click clear finish and then click on mega corp local and give it a second you see bloodhound down there sniffing which is pretty cool and you see this so this is man this is uh interesting uh wow a lot of stuff there <laughs> okay a lot of stuff but like i said that's just one of the reports that's not the one we're looking at second one it mentions is is fine principle with dc sync rights so this is right here number three fine principles with dc sync rights i'm going to click that you got to select the command the domain which is megacorp give it a second to update and i'm going to click that to close that and so you see right here, this node right here, this is what we've got on our screen over here. And let's see if I can shrink this down a little bit and make sure it plays nice. All right, so there it is. And what it's showing us, and maybe I have to make this bigger. No, I just have to hover over it. Okay, that's fine. So SVC Bez has, and what's this talking about the permissions? Get all changes, get, I'm sorry, get changes all right there. That's telling you the permissions privileges to the domain and so here's the root here's the domain right here and it's got those changes so we're going to use this account so again this means the account has the ability to request replication data from the domain controller and gain sensitive information such as user hashes we're about to get some hashes so what it wants us to do is worth checking to see if Kerberos pre-authentication has been disabled for this account which means it's vulnerable to a ASREP roasting account okay AS I don't know if that's Osrep or whatever. Anyway, we can check this using a tool such as Impact Get NP Users. That's what it wants us to do. Here's the command. Let me consult my guide over here because I can tell you <laughs> most of the stuff didn't work right. So JSON, this is located in the down folder. I got that. So what I did, and I'll walk you through this. Where's that file? Locate. And why don't I just copy this? Okay, save some time. So what I type was locate, and I want to find that Python script. Okay, Control Shift V. Because once again, if you're on Kali Linux, a lot of stuff is already on the box. So I did locate command. It wasn't there. Okay, so that's not good. So I was able to find it eventually, and where I found it was. By the way, it's oh I had a mistake there. There it is. Okay. So user shared document Python 3 package, that's where it's located. So the next step, and you might have to slow it down here because I'm about to go fast. Okay, so I'm going to copy that. Pseudo space copy user local bin uh, get np users.py to Python. So I'm basically copying this to the directory. So I'm going to change this though. Here's the deal. Remember downloads. We work from downloads in this tutorial. I don't know if that's the best way. But it works for me and because the download folder doesn't have funky permissions that cause things to break. So here we go. Run this command. Now I'm in the downloads folder, Kali. So what I did is I did sudo copy that from the location where it was user local bin get np users. And I copied that into get np users in the downloads folder. Okay. So I did that. Uh, no such file or directory. Interesting. Okay. So let's check it one more time. So it says it's not there. So let's do it. Let's go ahead and do our locate command again. 
using Python 3. So as you can see between when I did this the first time, the location has changed. So I'm going to adjust it here. I'm going to take it on my tutorial and just simply update this. And when I do this, I'll be able to uh, just run a command. So here's the updated command. So once again, locate command has been very helpful for me. And then I also have another search I do that's a little bit less sophisticated. So once again, it's not a file directory. Copy, use your local bin. Oh, it's still not updated. See, it's in examples right here. So let's copy this again, Control Shift C. And let's try one more time to update this. Okay, all right. That looks good. Okay, so now let's try this. I'm gonna clear the screen. I hate having the screen all messed up. And like I said, I do show my mistakes because, man, I would love for these things to go right the first time. All right, so it's not a directed area. Right, let's see. Let's look at this one more time. User Slayer Python. That's that. So pseudo. Oh, see, my syntax message. So pseudo copy. Man, I put it twice. There it is. Finally, <laughs> once again, make sure it's there. All right, and you can see I got got the file. Okay. So now after it does that. I've got a copy so I can actually run the command, but it doesn't run like that. It's not so simple and we're gonna do a couple of things, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and paste my command. You slow it down if you need to look at it. So Python 3, like they just have get user. You have to type Python 3 in front of it. All this information is the same, get to it, but then I do a pipe and hash because it says it references as a file, creates a file called hash. It doesn't do that. So I just pipe the output of this command to hash and when I type ls, guess what? I got a hash and I can just type cat hash. And that's what it is. So I pulled a the TGT ticket, something target um, ticket, ticket targeting ticket is what it's called in curve rolls. I don't understand curve rolls as good as. OK, it seems like a lot of people don't understand curve rolls. OK, but it's pretty complicated. But we're going to use the ticket that we retrieved from it. And it's basically something allowed from not having to store passwords on the client machine or something like that. It requests these tickets. It's complicated. Look it up, read it yourself. OK, so anyway, we get the TGT ticket. That's what the hash is. And we save it to a file called hash, which is what we did. We can use hashcat or John the Ripper to in conjunction with rawq.txt to obtain the plain text password, which is the, that right there. So they've got their John command. Well, before we can run that John command, we've got to get all the things in place. OK, so that rock text file that they talking about, it ain't there. OK, so we're going to pseudo copy that rock text file from its location where it's in user share where it's rock text and it's zipped up. So we're going to copy that from where it is located. And then we're going to unzip the file and we're copied it to the download folder. Now we're unzipping it. OK. And when that finishes, do ls, guess what I got? Rocku.txt right there. We got the file. So now I'm going to run John against the hash that we downloaded, John the Ripper. And it's going to go ahead and it's going to work on that hash. Now, what you got to do here is you got to let John do his thing. OK, just let it go. I just look at the first line using default encoding UTF-8. That's the same loaded one password hash. All right, and you see down here, it's it's got ways to go. It's gonna pull up this password, Sheffield 19. It's gonna get that for us. And by the way, we're getting close to the end of the tutorial. We're working our way through this. All right, and so you'll see, and we're gonna get the first flag and I'll tell you how to do all that good stuff. So, but right now it's just about patience and we'll see. So it's possible to access the servers using what's called WinRM and gain uh, user.txt. So user.txt, that's going to be the user flag. Remember, these servers have two flags. They have a user and a root, a user and a system flag is what they call it. So when we get finished with this command, we'll be able to get the user tag and uh, user flag in just a second. But it does require patience and we can't really move forward until this command finishes. OK. So let's let it do its thing. And then we'll install this evil win RM and we'll run a command and stuff that with the username and credentials that we've got. John usually is through by now. Okay, so it got me talking, got me filling up some space. But 
just bear with me. Okay, there it is, finally. Okay, and you can see, look at that, Sheffield 19. We got it, we got the password, we were able to crack the hash. But before we can do that, um, this command right here is Evil Jim. Guess what? That don't work. <laughs> it does not work. So we're going to sudo it, okay, because we need to elevate our credentials. And we a little bit, let's clear this up. Control Shift V, sudo and run that. And you'll see what happens, man. We're, we're, we're jumping on like it runs through this thing, installs a whole bunch of stuff. If you don't do sudo, you're going to see it doesn't do half of the installation. It fails and you're going to have trouble. So uh, when in doubt, go ahead and escalate your privileges using the sudo command. Okay, It'll save you a lot of trauma and trouble. Okay, And uh, man, this video is already 25, man. But it's, 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 not so, it's not easy to do these things fast. This is a lot of steps. All right, so we're able to get that. I'm going to go ahead and clear again. Got that installed. And now we're going to run a second command, the evil win rm. Shift V, paste that. There's command. You can always stop it and look at my commands. Guess what? Boom. We got a shell on the server. First thing you want to do, we're already in documents. We're going to go CD dot dot, go up one folder, and then we're going to go to CD desktop. And then we're going to do a directory because we're in Windows. Oh, there's user.txt. We're going to type user.txt txt. Type command allows us to display it. There is the first flag, control shift C. I'm gonna take this, go to hack the box, click submit flag right here, paste that flag in there, choose your difficulty, how difficult was this server to you, be honest with it, and then hit submit flag. I'm gonna get an error message because I've already done this. Like I said, I do my prep work with these exercises. All right, so we have the user type, so we're getting close to the end. We found that, so now, we need to go to the next step, all right? And so before we can do this, it wants you to type this secrets dump. Guess what? The file is not there. It's not there already. So we're going to have to do another copy and copy this. So you can, I'm going to leave that. By the way, don't mess that up. Leave that open. And I'm going to type locate secret dump dot py. Boom. There it is. I have locations. Let's see if any of these match what I have. User local bin. User local. Mm -mm. Nope. So I got to change my documentation to match what we have here. So uh, let's see. Which one do I want to take? Share Python 3 packets. We got several choices. So mine are a user local bin. But in this exercise, once again, I reset my VM. So what I had installed is no longer there. So I think what we can do, for example, is we'll take this one for mpackets. Control shift C. I'm going to copy that, okay? And then I'm going to update my command here my, in my document. All right, and so we'll copy this one. And if it doesn't, we got other locations. So here's a command, sudo copy, user share local docs, Python 3 and packets. Dash M packet examples. Okay, and we copy that. Cali. Okay, so we got that. But we made a mistake. Guess what? Not in the downloads folder. So I'm going to, I'm going to just going to delete it. D or RM secret secrets. Yes. Get rid of that. Change downloads. Okay, clear. And now I'm going to run that command again. Just up arrow three or four times right there and now i'm going to copy it and so there's the secret dump so now that i've copied that i can actually run the command okay so control shift v there's the command right there python 3 secrets dump.py dc ip address megacorps okay there is dump and it's in and i oh, so i made one adjustment i'm dumping mine so you run the command it just shows that on the screen i like to create a file with the output so i send it to dump hashes all right, so then we're going to reference that later. So I'm just, instead of just printing out the screen, I'm dumping it into a file. And when this finishes running, but we're literally dumping at this point, uh, we're dumping all the hashes for administrators. So in order to get the leverage to get changes all permission, we use impact and secret dump to perform DC sync attack and dump the NTLM hashes of all domain accounts. This is a very noticeable attack, okay? 
So now that we got it, remember dump hashes is the file I create. I'm gonna type ls, and you should see dump hashes, which is there. So I'm gonna cat dumped hashes, and that shows it right there. Now what we're looking for for the next command, and we're literally at the end. So I hope you made it here. Congratulations for making this form. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. I have tutorials and I'm continuing to walk through things like this. So join me on my journey to become a great hacker one day, hopefully. So use the domain of the administrator NTLM hash. We can put using that we can uh, use this in a PTH attack to gain elevated access to the system for which we can use impact is PS exact.py. Guess what? It ain't, you can't just run a command. It ain't there. But let me tell you something. The administrator account, the way you know the administrator account is 500 administrator colon 500 right there. I think that's, I don't know if that's a SID, the SSID, but that's what you're looking for. And that's what we're going to use in the next part of this. But before we can do this, let's go ahead. Let's clear this. Actually, I'm going to leave that tab. Because you'll need to reference that. So we need the Python or PSEC.py. So guess what? Locate PSEXEC.py. And let's see where we got. So we got choices. Let's see if they match up with what I got in the tutorial. I had user local bin. Guess what? It ain't there. So we can use user share, share Python 3 and packet. We'll use that one. So copy this. Okay. This location. Control Shift C update my documentation because we got to copy several files all right so i've got the updated command here you're going to control shift v so pseudo cp user share python 3 so i'm copying that file to the downloads folder but guess what oh i almost made a mistake guess what i'm not in the downloads folder again so trying to keep everything organized so cd downloads Okay, now I'm gonna copy that command, pressing up arrow, so I get to our previous commands, which I don't have any, so I just control shift V, pseudo copy, user share and package, examples, PSS, okay, done. Cali as the password, there it is. And do I have my command, PS exec? Yes, it is, it's there. So we got that command. So now we gotta run that command. In order to run it, uh, we're gonna need to uh, make sure you go back and reference. So here's the thing. You're going to need to copy this. Okay. So let me set the command up. If you're reading what they say, they basically tell you this part of the command. And then you substitute NTLM hash colon NTLM hash. That's already set up. NTLM hash part one. There's the colon in the middle. And then NTLM hash right there. Okay. So, all right. And the way I've got the command set up for you, okay, and it's going to be different because you have to do a Python 3 command in front of it. So let's clear that control shift V and see there's my command. There's my full command. Let's run that. And you can see it's going through. And guess what? I'm on Windows. I'm on the machine. So all I have to do now is I have to navigate to the desktop of the machine. The way that I do that, I've already done the research, I know where it is. So CD, C call the user administrator desktop. I'm at the desktop, type of directory. Guess what I see? Root.txt. And Windows, instead of cat and Linux, you wanna type root.txt. And there is your flag. You're gonna copy this, Control Shift C. I'm gonna go back to hack the box. Click on submit a flag. Paste it here and choose your level and submit that. I've already owned the box. I got both flags and you're finished. Don't forget to drop a like on this video, especially if you made it to the end. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel for everything hacking. Have some very interesting interviews with people who are working in the industry telling you how to get into it. Hope this was helpful. Thanks again for watching.